Good morning, dear student. I am uh, Dr. K. V. Asthana. Uh, we have already discussed about the many topics in the, the election law. Today, we are going to discuss with the another topic that is election expenses. Uh, it is a very important topic. Already, we have discussed the uh, corrupt practices then uh, eligibility condition, then education qualification, then uh, others. So uh, today we have the topic of election expenses. Here we have already uh, discussed in the class also that the uh, election expenses must be mentioned into the election as well as the the budgetary and it plays a very important role into the election. Here, if the we are talking in the into the general that the multi-party system into the your democratic system, it plays a very important role, and there is a provision also. It is conceded at all hand that money power plays a big role in the electoral process and even disturb the level playing of field that is the free and fair election and staying the purity and sanctity of the electoral process. I could remember one of the keys uh, in that the Supreme Court of uh, India has observed regarding that common cause and uh, this is the case uh, registered society versus union of india and others and uh, this is the case of the 96 air 96 and sc 3081 where the supreme court has emphasized the general election to decide who rules over the 850 million Indians are stayed at every five to six years since independence. Means the, the election is being done or after the five years or the six years. And then the, it is necessary that the parties must take into the some uh, budgetary system because uh, it plays a very important role also. But thing is that we have to look into that how the, the money is being expended or how the money is being monitored, how the money is being, how the fund is being uh, asked from and uh, who are the depository, who is going to monitor is. Uh, these are the areas where we are going to concern over and in this competitive political parties and election campaign are a central and health of the democratic parties but the campaigns require the significance resources to the effectiveness and india has developed the complex election expenditure the political party funding and reporting and disclosure of the law. Here, some of the suggestions are that these laws may have the perverse impact on the electoral systems. And hence, this tend to the drive campaign of the election expenditure underground, the foster of the reliance and unaccountable funds and that is called the black money and every now and then we are uh, watching that we are seeing that uh, when the election is going on that the uh, the case are coming that the um, candidate who are rich wealthy or has got the good number of funds from the either of the party or uh, from the any of the NGO or any of the 
the contributor who is who is donating the funds here so they they starts using the money into the different way distributing the money to the voters and this may call the something related to the unusual practice of the 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 fund or the money and then further this tend to the lead to an ad adverse election selection system in which those willing to able to work with the black money dominating the politics we conclude here that the possibility with the remedies including the partial stage financial of the parties and might restore the health of the party here i am going to mention the some of the statutory provision of the election expenditure by the political parties section 77 says that uh, under the representation of people's act account of election expenses and maximum thereof here it has got the different sub clause in that first sub clause states that every candidate at an election shall either by himself or by his election agent keep a separate and correct account of all expenditure in connection with the election incurred or authorized by him or by his election agent between the date which he has been nominated and the date of declaration of the result thereof and both the dates are inclusive for example here for the removal of the doubt is hereby declared that in that the how the it has been enumerated to the expenditure incurred by the leader of the political party on account of travel by year or by other mean of the transport for propagating the program of the political party shall not be deemed to be the expenditure in connection with the election incurred here we are again going to emphasize that the some another part of the section 77 of the representation of people's act here uh, you are telling to so any expenditure incurred in respect of the any arrangement made facility provided or other act or things done by any person in the service of the government then further belonging to any other act or thing done by any person in the service of the government and in this section 1 2 3 is also included whereas the section 1 2 3 sub class 6 or 7 here it discharges or purported to discharge of his official duty as mentioned in the proviso to that class shall not be deemed to be expenditure in connection with the election incurred or authorized by the candidate here it seems that the candidate must have the account mad must have the sufficient uh, proper accounting and in the election period who is the authority do is the authority who will check the the process and at the end of the election after the result declaration 
the candidate will submit the ex expenditure details to the D or the election commission. In that case, it is mandatory for every candidate and election to keep a separate and correct account of all expenditure incurred, which is or any person who is authorized by the candidate who will keep the record. And further, in between the dates on which he has been nominated and the declaration shall both the dates should be inclusive so that the correct expenditure uh, details must be taken out. Here, one of the case I wanted to mention the Kamar Lal Gupta. You can note down that the Kamar Lal Gupta versus Kamar Nath Chawla. This is the case of 75. And uh, citation R, you can uh, note down the citation is AIR 1975 SC 308. AIR 1975 SC 308. Here the Supreme Court has uh, emphasized that it should be open to any individual or any political party, howsoever small, to be able to contest an election on a footing of equality with any other individual or political party, howsoever rich and well financed it may be, and also to eliminate as far as the possible the influence of a big money in the electoral process. Means the Supreme Court is also very concerned about the how the the expenditure is being done. Again, we are going to discuss with the type of the election expenditures. Here, there is the two type of election expenditures are. Here, we can say that the first is the expenditure would be a something authorized by the election commission. Here, the first is this would include the expenditure connected with the campaigning like a public meeting, public rallies, banners, vehicles used, expenditure in the advertisement done, either in the print media or through the electronic media. Second will be the something related to the your category of expenditure means which is not permitted under the law. For example, the distribution of the money among the voters, distribution of liquor, or any other item to the electorals with the intent to the influence them come answer under the definition of the bribery. And we have already discussed under the, the, the corrupt practices. There, the, if the bribery is being taken or being used to. So, we can go further under the 
IPC. Then further, Section 3 of the RP Act 1951. Here, that the expenditure on such item is illegal. Yet another form of the expenditure which is coming to the fore in the recent time that is surrogate advertisements, paid news or any other things are. But how we are going to manage it? We were discussing about this, the section 1, 2, 3 of the corrupt practices. In this, uh, one of the case I remember that uh, Ghasi Dham was a Dal Singh. This is the case of 1968. In that, Justice Hidayatullah has given a very good judgment regarding the dispersion of the discretionary grant by the minister. Here, there is a thin line between the corrupt practices and evil practice depending upon the soundness of the evidence, where the section 123 is again emphasized is a ground for setting aside under the section 100 of the Act. So if the High Court is of the opinion that any corrupt practice by a return candidate or result of election in so far as to concern the return candidate has been materially affected and further the election of the return candidate is liable to be declared as a void under the section 100 of subclass 2. Further, here is to be, it must be ensured that the all election expenditure on the permitted items is truthfully reported and considered while scrutinizing the expenditure account shall submit by the candidate. And further, the surrogate advertisement, paid news, etc. is concerned and it is obvious that it will never be reported by the political party and the candidate. Then, how the things is to be monitored? Means, the monitoring of the things are <coughs> day to day, because the election commission is already monitoring into so day-to-day -day election expenditure incurs by the candidate, election expenditure mechanism will be put in place of each constituency. And further, the maintenance of the day-to-day -day account of election expenditure as we have discussed earlier by the candidate is very, very essential and it's a mandatory. Further, and though this account of election expenditure is required to be submitted within the 30 days of the, from the date of the declaration of the result. In this, how the monitoring is? Monitoring is to be done on the regular basis. During the campaign period is to be of any use. And the further, after the campaigning is over, here, see that it will be difficult to get any evidence of election expenditure. And so then the DEO is required under the law to scrutinize and submit a report to the commission after the election. And it is the primary duty of the DEO, see that. It is the primary duty of the DEO to collect proper evidence 
during the election campaign based on which it will be decided whether any expenditure is left out in the statement of the account or which has been submitted by the um, this uh, candidate right then further here one case i am going to mention that shiv kripal singh versus vv giri and it is also that that in do undo influences means some of the funds is being used by the some another purposes here they are telling that the conversing is permissible it's okay fine but the if there is interference or attempted interference which got into the uh, something uh, uh, related to the attracting of the voters may cause or may have the another effect here the sum of the things has been provisioned into i have i am going to mention that the the how the things could be the expenditures must also be be controlled by the ceo which also should ensure that in the case of any suspicion about the feeding on the large scale which necessary steps should be taken to prevent it so my dear student now you can know down the sum of the the question related to the election expenses first thing write a short note on the election expenses and second is that under which provision the election expenses are described here the you can say that the sum of the uh, the case law which has been also mentioned into the uh, my um, lecture you can go through and have the analysis of that so can so that you can know that the how the it can uh, be uh, accounted or how it can be monitored how it can be uh, treated as the corrupt practices into the election now today uh, this is the uh, my lecture and uh, if you have any query you can call me on this number and you can send you your email to the my following this email address now thank you thank you thank you very much